Okay, let's start. Hello, everybody. I'm Franco Pellegrini. I am from Argentina, so um, I can give this talk in either Spanish or English, but given the situation, I think the most appropriate language would be English. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about the new JavaScript framework we are working on with uh, this guy over there, Rod Garbas. Actually, he started it. I'm, I joined it later when he convinced me that this was the way to go. Um, this goes in the same tone as uh, Eric was talking about in the in the state of Plone, the mockup thing, and all that. So let's get started. This is the current status of JavaScript development in Plone. Uh, it's like we are in the past. Uh, we have a HTML and JavaScript there, and do stuff really simple stuff usually. Uh, when you first install a Plone 432, you get 41 JavaScript files registered in a resource registry. Uh, seven of them are disabled. Um, the resource registry is the place where you register all the, the JavaScript files and the CSS files that you want to be globally accessible on any of the rendered uh, pages. Uh, this this is uh, I, I like this it's a it's a good idea but there's stuff on it like uh, packing the 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 JavaScript or merging them uh, it's kind of old like this is the the commit history for the packer file where the this happens for instance for JavaScript files uh, it has its first commit seven years ago and two commits four years ago. Uh, this is not good. Um, okay, time machine, I don't want you. Um, what happens now is that when a new release of a JavaScript technology uh, appears, then you need to uh, make a new release for the Plone package that integrates it into Plone. So when there's a new jQuery release, you have to update Plone up jQuery if the developer has done it. Uh, and also what happens is that as the same thing that happened with the skinning and the UI before Diaso, uh, if, you're, if you're the designer needs to do JavaScript stuff, they need to know about Plone, about build out, about all the things that we use daily. It's not that bad as it was with skinning, but still it's pretty very bad. Um, also, what, what happens is that you can easily mess uh, when you move JavaScript on the resource registry, when you change uh, one of the compressions on the dropdown of, of the tool, um, if, if, if can be merged or, or cannot be. And you get these beautiful errors that are really descriptive and you really know what's going on. And the, another really, really important problem we have with JavaScript right now is that we have absolutely no tests. Um, is, is working with JavaScript in Plone right now is like working on disarming a bomb. Like, if you pull the wrong cable, everything blows up and you have, you have no idea what's going on and you have to roll back to a backup or something. So when I have to do stuff for a client that games and say, oh, yeah, I went to the CDMI and changed something and JavaScript is not longer working. This is what comes to my mind. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure most of you have the same feeling. <laughs> and well, this guy, Rock, as I said before, I know he had this feeling, and, but he said, I'm, I have to do something. So he did. He changed the approach of JavaScript development or he's trying to, at least. Um, so JavaScript is not just a script language to make minor changes to web pages. As most of us already know, people are building really powerful and big applications entirely on JavaScript. There's a lot of platforms and frameworks and whatever to do this. Uh, there are a lot of tools, uh, there are um, uh, yeah, tools and, and, and different 
set of applications that help them do this. So why reinvent all these things that JavaScript developers know and use and, and work? Uh, so let's reuse it. So say how to plumb mockup. The, the, the main goals for it is that uh, there should not be the need for a JavaScript developer to even know what the build is or how to use it. Uh, another goal is to provide JavaScript already compiled, compressed, or whatever it needs to be done. Uh, you, you have a JavaScript guy, it gives you a JavaScript file, you put it on the HTML, and it, it just works. You should not need Python packages for this. Uh, and it, 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 it should be friendly for JavaScript developers. So some of the tools that we are using right now is one of them is Yeoman, which more like a tool is a set of tools. It's like a workflow for working with, with uh, JavaScript. Uh, it provides three different tools. The first of them is Yo, which is used to, to create what, it call, what, what they call a scaffold, but we know it as a skeleton or it's what we what we know as paster basically is anybody here a javascript developer and, and know these tools okay so i'm going to be uh, throwfully on, the, on this because you don't know what <laughs> grunt is another tool uh it's used to to build preview and, and test through tasks you can see this as what, what we know as build out uh, with the recipes uh, this is pretty similar and the final, the final tool that Yoman includes, it's a package manager. You can describe here dependencies, um, and, and Bower will handle them. You can get them from a repository or, or of uh, specific uh, versions, or you can get them from GitHub or whatever version control you're using. Next, there's the, the library, Pattern Sleep. It's a JavaScript library. It, it, it is intended for fast prototyping. Uh, the, main, the main idea of it is that you can use, uh, you, you have your HTML, and then your designer just includes the, the, lib, the library. And just using some specific uh, CSS classes on, on data attributes, it can provide functionality to this HTML and do it really fast to to show it to the customer. It introduces the concept of a pattern. A pattern basically is a, um, a, 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 a functionality uh, that can use several JavaScript uh, libraries. And from for mockup, we're just using the the registry from the pattern slip and well the the idea of of patterns and uh, how they should should work. For the testing side, there's this plugin for Karma to use uh, with, uh, with the test framework uh, Mocha, and the assertion library Kai, or Chai, I don't know how, how to pronounce that. Um, most of this can be replaced with whatever you use on a daily basis, except for the pattern slip. Uh, so, as I said, this is a, a let's find what tools people are using and let's use it too. So, a pattern. Basically, this is a code that uh, describes a, a pattern. You define dependencies on top, uh, which uh, uses required JS. Um, then you describe the, the class and some uh, methods.
Okay, so uh, what is important here is that the name, my pattern in this case, uh, the, in this section you will put default that the, the, a pattern when you initialize it can take uh, attributes as, as input. And this is where you define default values for those attributes in case they, they don't they don't exist and you need it in your, in your code. And this is where the code will get executed when the pattern gets initialized. This is a basic, well, the, the, the minimum amount of code needed for, for a working pattern. And this is how you will use it on your HTML. You, when, when the pattern is loaded into the, into the page, uh, you just use, uh, uh, you include one class it can, it can have a lot of classes, of course, but one of them has to have the, the path part uh, hyphen and the name of the pattern you want to use in, the, in that specific um, in that specific specific HTML object. Finally, what glues all this together is a bundle. So you define on top of them on top of it um, all the patterns you're intending to use. And then you register this bundle in the registry. And finally, this is the, the important part, the registry scans the, the, the body in this case, or whatever, when you're developing some advanced patterns that modify some sections and those sections get pulled in by Ajax or whatever, sometimes you need to run this to scan that part in case it has some patterns into it. Uh, the name I don't think it's used anywhere, and the and this section here, what 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 got ah, what goes inside the transform is what gets executed before scanning the the DOM of the HTML. So you, if you need to do some changes to the HTML and you don't have uh, the access to change it, you can you can do it there. This is what blown up widgets do at the moment. So to be more a uh, practical example of how you will develop a, a pattern, uh, let's say you want to include this carousel called Carufred Cell. It's a jQuery plugin to do carousel with images. Uh, you will do something like this. You d download the, the jQuery uh, plugin and you, and you include it as a dependency of your pattern. Then you name it. Carousel pattern, name carousel. It takes some default uh, attributes. You define some functionality in those methods. And then you have the init code. This part here is the, the, the element where you defined the class, like the div we used recently. Uh, it will be this one. So the, the nice thing about this is that it gets isolated from the rest of it. You should always work on the element and not the document or, the, or whatever we used to do. Uh, so when you define, when, when you call this, this these are the, 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 the values that get by default if you don't use them. And then you do a specific stuff based on them. So set the auto scroll to true or false, and if the if the showed thumbnails is uh, true, then create the thumbnails and give the amount of them. It's a pretty basic stuff, and this will be in like in the example we had recently. This will be some, how you use it. Okay. For instance, let's say you don't want to have the auto scroll functionality, then you you can, the, the way to pass these attributes to the, to the pattern is with data attributes. So the, you have to be specific here. It's data, hyphen, and the same thing you're using as a class. Okay? So in this case, da data, path, my pattern, and you pass the attribute you want to set for the pattern. And this is multiple um, attributes. This is useful for when you have uh, your JavaScript developer can focus on developing uh, the, the pattern, and then someone that doesn't even know JavaScript can using this 
make his web page look or, or behave on a different uh, way really easily and, and it doesn't need to touch a line of JavaScript. And final, finally, you have uh, tests. Uh, this is an example of a pattern included in mockup which enables the cookie um, alert that you get on some sites. Uh, basically, you apply this pattern on the on the body, and it will create the 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 element that shows on top. What this do is pretty pretty easy to understand. Before each is code that gets ex executed, each of these are are tests test cases. Uh, so this before each gets executed before running each of them. So what what I do there is remove the cookie. Um, and, and create just the piece of HTML as I wanted to test it. Here's the test. I expect that the, the cookie directive, which is a, a, an object that the patterns create inside here, doesn't exist, right? So expect to find no elements to equal zero. Then I run the registry, which will execute the pattern in this piece of code and this this l this l here and then expect it to be equal to 1 then uh, there's another test case where i, I just add an attribute a, a data attribute where uh, even the, the pattern exists I, I don't want it to to show and it tests that so um, to use this on your own project, uh, I had created this generator, uh, which is to be used with uh, Yomen. Um, it assumes you already have Yomen installed, so to install it and use it, you, know, you need only these two lines, npm install, uh, hyphen g to be global, accessible, uh, and then you use it with yo blown mockup. After you answer a few questions, you end up with this scaffold or skeleton of the of your project. Bower JSON is where you will declare your dependencies to be used with Bower. Uh, config.js is the file to uh, configure some stuff for required JS. The grant file is where you get the the, the build out CFG like file uh, where you get all your tasks for building, for, for uglifying, for uh, generating documentation. Uh, it is already populated with, with basic default stuff. You can edit them and add more. And these are the, the two important parts, the bundle and, the, and a pattern to, with, the, with the basic stuff needed to code. Um, Inside widgets, JS, you can include, um, this depends on Plum mockup, so you can include on, on widgets all the Plum mockup stuff or just some of the patterns. Um, and my pattern will be, of course these names w will change according to the questions you answer here, but uh, this is the basic uh, structure. And well, the pa package JSON. So, okay. So um, when you when you finished coding the the your pattern and, and including your in your bundle, you just run grant. Oh, be careful when you when you run this, yo plum mockup that generates this stuff in the in the current directory. It doesn't create a, 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 a new a new folder. So be careful with that. Grant will compile all this into one uh, file, into one JavaScript file in the build directory, which is the, the file you need to include in your, in your project. And that's it. If, you, if, if I made myself clear of how this is so amazing to start using it, this is how your reaction should be. For more information, go to any of those uh, URLs. You, you have 
furthermore links in, in there. Uh, Plone app widgets, install it, test it. It's really, really amazing what the, in the last sprint, how they advanced with this. Uh, how the, what's the sprint called? Yeah, Pacific Rim. Um, it's really amazing. You have to test it. You, you just install it and use your Plone site, and you'll be amazed. Questions? Sorry. Well, it's supposed to replace it. It, it, it should generate. Um, it should change the bundle value for the resource registry to um, deprecated, and it's not supposed to be loading in the page. It should replace the functionality from the old JavaScript with patterns. It should. Yeah. So yes, uh, when you have front side, you're supposed to have only one bundle opening everything. That's right. You're not supposed to have separate bundles for different purposes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So does that mean somehow we? Uh, how do we uh, apply that when we are while deploying products on front side? We have to make sure that we are replicating every time the bundle. Well, I, I have used uh, mockup in uh, a couple of projects, and what I do is in the skin uh, product, I I put the the JS bundle there and and uh, as part of the, of the skin. And if I needed to change something um, from the from the patterns thing, I, I do changes. I then compile it again and, and update the, the theme. Uh, you mean if if the new product introduces new patterns or something? Yeah, that, that is something that is not pretty clear to me, and I think we should. Mm. Sorry, I didn't hear a thing. So what what he's saying is a, a question I, I think I already uh, asked you, and <laughs> I don't know that. Um, so what happens if you have the in your skin your JS compiled whatever, and then the, you you want to install a new package that provides some new pattern? Uh, it should be created. Load it dynamically, or yeah. uh, so it's all JavaScript, right? So if you want some other JavaScript, you put it after the first one. Right? So after the first script, which is the hmm. flow, so the one that uh, flow widget produces, uh, you have to put your JavaScript after that. That's it. So maybe at, at, at the end, the, the plone site will not have just one JavaScript. Uh, yeah, perfect. I mean. If you install an add-on, mm. that add-on will, will install new JavaScript files. Of course, if you want your project to be optimized, then you can compile everything into one file. So there is option for optimizing, but for add-ons, so they work transparently, uh, there will still be multiple files. Actually, yeah. if, if that's the case, then as you add new packages, you add new packages that provide their own JavaScript. So you now have four or five of them. Currently, we, we control ordering of JavaScripts and how they get rendered into the page, the resource registry. Right? So we go and we say we want this one to be before that one. 
Yeah. Is, does that remain? Do we have the ability to, to reorder the, 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 the loading order of the different JavaScripts? There was some talk about removing the resource registry, yeah. but I think we should find a way to do that without the resource oh, registry. So there is something in this talk, but for now we're just thinking with the... So you know, we, will, we will continue to have the resource registry until yes. we have something else. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Thank you.